Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna to make a hanger for my skateboard and a helmet. Everybody in my family has a skateboard, which means we have a lot of boards that we have to figure out how to store. Online, there are a bunch of different storage methods, but a lot of them hold the boards this way, which makes no room for a helmet. I wanna encourage my kids to always take a helmet and the board out at the same time, so I wanna make a hanger that holds both. Another problem with single hangers is they usually hold the board this way, so you only see the grip tape and not the graphics on the bottom. So I wanna make the hanger hold the board this way, so you can see what's on the bottom of the board. All right, let's do it. Technically, there's really not a whole lot to this project. It's mostly just cutting and welding some pieces of metal together. I set the saw to a 30 degree angle and then cut an angle on the end of a piece of square tubing. I mark back the length of the piece that I wanted and then set it up to the blade to cut. At the front of that piece, I used the off cut to make a stop block. That way I could cut several pieces with the exact same angle and the same length. I just flipped the piece around to get the same angle put it up to the stop block and made another cut. A lot of people ask if you can cut steel on a regular miter saw. This is not a regular wood miter saw. I have a link to this one down in the description if you want to find out more about it. As I cut these pieces, I fit them together to make almost a hexagon. There was one final piece that kind of jutted out to the top, but it had the same angle on one end. This makes it more of a hook. All of these open ends of the tubing needed to be closed up, so I cut down some sheet metal with an angle grinder, made some squares that could act as caps. Before I welded any of these, I took each one of them to the grinder and added a small bevel to each edge that would get welded. This small channel gives the hot metal a place to go so that it's a strong weld even after you grind it smooth. I got all the pieces lined up and then added some tack welds to each one of these joints to hold them together. Adding a tack first will help you get everything lined up, then go back and fill in the full weld. If you put too much heat on a joint, it'll distort and then your whole thing will get out of whack. I intentionally made the caps a little bit oversized, so after getting them welded in place, I went back with a cutoff wheel to try to square them up. This was pretty ugly, and I still came back with a flap disc to try to get them flat. I'm still not super good at welding, and so every time I do it, I learn a little bit more and I get a little bit better, but there's always stuff I have to grind down smooth. Since there were so many segments on this piece, I tried to make sure that each one was lined up and tacked in multiple places on each side of each joint before filling in any of the welds. That way, in case I made a mistake, I could easily take it apart. I did this on both sides of the piece and then went back and filled in all the full welds and it took quite a while to get it fully welded up. My welds are also probably a little thicker and taller than they need to be and that just causes a lot of extra grinding. I used about a 40 grit flap disc for all the flat surfaces and got them in pretty decent shape, but then for the corners, I used a belt grinder. This allowed me to flatten each one of the faces but also add a small round over to the outside of the corners. After I got all of the surfaces in pretty good shape, I cut down another piece of square tubing to make the mount for the wall. I squared this up with a magnet on the back side of my hook and then welded it in place on all four sides. They'll be on the back anyway, so you won't really see them, but I tried to keep the two inside corners of this welded a little bit smoother so I wouldn't have to grind them down as much. I switched over from the flap disc to a hard grinding wheel to get this smoother even faster. Went over the whole thing with the flap disc and got it in pretty good shape, but still some of the edges are kind of ununiform. So, take a file to it and manually get them the same shape. This worked out really well and was especially helpful on those inside corners that needed to be cleaned up. I was about to start working on where the helmet was going to sit and the design that I had I just decided I didn't like. So, instead I'm going to take one of these extra pieces, it's the same pieces down here, and mount it on top. That'll give me just enough area for the helmet to sit and lean forward a little bit, which will hide a lot of this stuff. So when this is hanging on the wall, all you'll see is the helmet, the hook, and the skateboard hanging below it. I think it'll work out. I cut two more pieces of sheet metal to cap the ends of this piece and attach it and weld it and grind it. But since I've already talked about all that and shown you all that, I'm just gonna stop talking for a few minutes and turn the music up.
After all that was finished, I went over the entire piece with a flap disc, just a light pass to get rid of any mill scale and any extra stuff that was on the surface. The last piece to make was a mount to put on the wall. This was just a thick piece of flat steel. I found the center of this piece and from there marked out the square where the square tubing would fit. On the two ends, I split the difference and made a mark with a punch so that I could drill a hole. Over time, I've learned to drill holes in metal a lot slower than I would in wood and use some oil to help keep the heat down. The heat will ruin your bits very quickly. Once I got those holes drilled, I welded this piece on the back of the square tubing and got it ready to clean up with a grinder. I've ground down most of my ugly welding and now I just gotta go over the whole thing with the flap disc to try to get it smooth and ready for paint. I did think about putting some gussets under here and here to reinforce it, but this thing is so strong and it's just gonna have a skateboard hanging from it, so I'm gonna skip those. After getting it cleaned up, I went over the entire piece with a primer and then did a really light sanding to get a smooth surface before paint. You may be able to use some heavy duty drywall anchors to mount this, but I decided to put it into a stud just to be safe. I marked the holes from the bracket and then used a slightly smaller drill bit to drill the holes than the lag bolts that I used to mount it. So there it is. I like it overall. I like the design basically because I've never seen anything like it, but of course it has its problems. The first one is the paint. Even though I like the color, it's going to get scratched off because it's just spray paint. I wanted to powder coat it initially, but it won't fit in my oven, so I couldn't do that. But powder coating would definitely make the finish hold up a lot longer. The next big problem is the amount of time that it took to make. If I had to make a bunch of these, it would take way too much time and would not be worth it. But if you just want a single hanger that has a unique look to it, they can work pretty well. But I'll say, as far as being a unique design, I'm happy with it. It gave me some more practice for my metalworking skills, and I think it was one good iteration. I think the next version of a skateboard hanger will probably be completely different, and since there's six people in my family, I have five more to try out. I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. I've got lots of other projects, including this skateboard. I actually made that for my wife a while back, and if you want to see that video, it'll be right there. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.